the WNBA, excuse me, will stop the games in August for the Olympics. But right now you're getting ready for the Olympics for, and uh, also practicing for the storm. How grueling is that then? <laughs> um, it's not that bad. You know, it was the same in 2004. You know, you, you play with your WNBA team until the time comes, and then you kind of switch your gears, focus on something else, and, and turn to the USA team. Um, so, you know, everybody's in the same boat, uh, just trying to make the best of it. Uh, I stay focused on the storm, like I said, until that until that last day. You come across as a very personable player, an approachable player. Now, if, if the young player comes across you and gets a chance to ask you a question, and say they say, uh, I don't know, maybe they just ask you, what, you know, they needed to do to be as successful as Sue Bird, what would you tell them? You know, I think you have to have <clears throat> some sort of resilience. You know about you in order to. I might not say that word, okay, but <laughs> I would definitely <laughs> word it in a different way. In a different way, but you have to. You know, you have to be able to kind of roll with the punches because um, you're going to get punched at times. You know, for some, they. You know, if they try out for a team, they might not make it, and you know, you can't just call it quits at that moment. You know, and I definitely learned that. You know, when you get you know metaphorically being knocked down, you know, it's it's. The people who are special athletes or who can become special athletes are those who are able to kind of stand up again and, and still succeed. You know, you definitely find out a lot about your character through that adversity. So that's what, that's definitely something I would try to tell them. You know, if they have goals to be in the WNBA or even just to make their high school team, um, you know, you have to be able to, to work through anything. And, and when I say anything, it could be, like I said, getting cut. It could be an injury. It could be, you know, maybe you have, maybe you don't get along with your coach or maybe your teammates or whatever the case may be. You have to be able to, to work through that. Now, things have obviously changed in the Olympics since the Olympics started many years ago. But one of the things I noticed um, is whether it is summer or winter, the stars of the games are thought of as more than just athletes. But uh, I see a lot of stuff out there where they're, considered sex symbols <laughs> or you know yeah. they're trying to change things a little bit what is your take on that um you know i think uh <laughs> i don't know how this is going to come across but i think generally speaking i'm not even talking i'm not even talking about basketball players but it's funny because um in athens you know we were walking around the village you know myself my teammates and uh you know you look at some of these athletes and they are in unbelievable shape i mean right. I felt like a fat pig walking around and, and standing next to these, like, track and field athletes or swimmers or, you know. I mean, seriously, the way their bodies are just cut up and, and, and toned is unbelievable. And this is both male and female. So I think, you know, athletes, to some degree, are, you know, are just physical specimens. And so with that, I think people view that as a sexy thing. You know, they view it as sex symbols. And that's, I think, where that comes from. You know, they're just in prime physical shape. And I it must add, too, AOL did something not too long ago with that. And uh, your picture was up there, so uh, <laughs> don't sell yourself. <laughs> yeah, I think there was a picture of you in there. So don't sell yourself short. So there was, it, was a, it was a good thing. Now I made you blush. <laughs> So what do you think the the team looks like right now, the Olympic team? And uh, in Beijing, who do you think will be your toughest opponents? Yeah, um, we're looking good. You know, I think from top to bottom, we're probably the most talented team in the Olympics. You know, I don't think there's anybody who would argue that. You know, we probably have the best 12 players. But <laughs> what we don't have is the training time that other teams have, the practice time. Um, because of the WNBA and, and when the season is, you know, our our training is, is really cut short. I mean, and when I and by cut short, I mean we haven't had any, you know. So we'll meet um, a week before the Olympics, practice for a couple of days, fly to China, play in some, some exhibition games, and then we start. Whereas other teams, you know, um, such as our biggest competitors, which will probably be Russia, Australia, and the host country, China, I mean, they've been playing together for months. Um, you know, I, I happen to play overseas in Russia, and I know a lot of the girls on the team personally, and I know they've been training since, you know, mid-May, early June. You know, so they're going to have a month and a half, two months of training before the games start. And that's, 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 that, that's what puts us at a disadvantage. Um, so like I said, are we the most talented? Yes. But we're not necessarily the most prepared, and we have a lot of ground to cover before our first game, and that's where it's going to be our, you know, that's where our biggest challenge lies. Uh, obviously, speaking of Russia, obviously you've heard of Becky Hammond's decision to play for Russia, and many people have called her tra 
it's her trader, including, I, bu I believe, uh, United States coach and Donovan. What is your opinion on her decision to play for Russia? Um, you know, I think, uh, I think it's Becky's decision to make. You know, I happen to be friends with Becky, and, um, you know, I know it was a tough decision for her. And, you know, if you, if you go through the entire timeline of it, um, you know, at first, I don't know, it's, it's, it's a long story as to how it all went down, but, you know, at first, I don't think she really had thoughts of when she was accepting the citizenship. I don't think the Olympics was really, you know, in her thought pattern. But, like I said, it's, it's her decision. And, and I know a lot of people are kind of, I just feel like I've come across people who have either had an extreme reaction to it, that they call her a traitor, or a lot of people just don't care. You know, and it was her opportunity to be in the Olympics, and, and she took it. Um, you know, and in, in that, in sports, but specifically in basketball, but really in sports, oh, this is not this is not the first time this has happened. You know, there's, there's actually speaking of Russia, there's um, a guy named J.R. Holden, and you'll see him. He's a a regular guy from uh, I believe Pittsburgh. You know, played basketball at Bucknell, um, and a, re a regular guy, and and he plays for the Russian national team. You know, and that's just the way it is. You know, his club team, which is the same club that Becky plays for, offered him five years ago, I think, the same kind of deal that they offered Becky. You know, it's just a part of sports. I went to the Olympics in Greece, and there were Americans, um, there was an American on the Greek national team. You know, it's just, in the grand scheme of things, it's, I understand that it's the, it's the whole nature of the Olympics to represent your country. But this is something that has happened, you know, for many, many years. So it's hard to just kind of come down hard on one person for that. I know that it's going to be a lot of preparation during the Olympics for the games and uh, practices. But have you made any plans of what you'll do on any year off time when you're in Beijing? Uh, it's hard. You know, we're, the, we're one of the only sports, one of the few sports that um, we play the entire Olympics. Um, you know, we play every other day for the entire, you know, whatever it is, week and a half, two weeks. So it's not, there's not a ton of time to do stuff. Um, I was just talking to another reporter about how I'd, I would love to go to the Great Wall. You know, I would love to see that. I'm not sure I'm going to get a chance, um, you know, because you literally play every other day. And, and while you do want to kind of soak up as much as the culture and experience as much of the country that you're, that you're in at the time, um, you also want to be ready. You know, you want to... You're there for one reason, and that's to, to win a gold medal. So you want to, you know, rest and take care of your body and things like that. So if I make it to the Great Wall, I'll let you know how it was. If I don't, maybe next time. Now, I know you probably have many, but who has been the biggest help to you in your career from high school high school to the pros or even just family members? Who has been the biggest support? Right. I don't know. You know, I've been lucky that I've had a bunch of different people kind of help me along the way. You know, I think back to... Uh, to my high school days, and, you know, I had great coaches, both with my AAU program, the Liberty Bells, and in high school. Um, Jill Cook, Vincent Canizaro, and Bob Mackey were definitely people who, who helped me, who helped me, um, you know, get the college scholarship that I wanted. And then from there, you know, when I went to college, um, you know, I'd have to say that the people, the coaches at, at the University of Connecticut, they've, they've really made me, helped make me the player that I am today. Um, not just physically, but mentally. I mean, they challenged me. They, they. I mean, they did everything they they could to, to get me to where I am now. And I, and I owe them so much for that. Um, I really do. If, if I had to pick anybody, it would be those four coaches: Coach Ariema, Coach Daly, Tony Cardoza, and Jamal Elliott. Now, Sue, it has been a pleasure, and good luck to you and all the U.S. women's basketball team, uh, thank you and also much. with the Seattle Storm when you guys come back. Okay. Take care. All right, well, thanks. And as you can tell from the interview, Sue is just a great person, and she just, I've done many interviews, and that was just such an easy interview to do. Her her answers to my questions were really honest, and, and she really did a great job. Now, my third and final interview.